Good morning. Good rainy morning. It's a beautiful morning, but I'm so glad to see each one of you here this morning. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome for the first time. God's grace and peace and welcome to you. I'm Pastor Jess, and on behalf of the whole congregation, we are glad that you are here this morning. I know we have some folks at home worshiping as well. We welcome you uh, in Canada and Pennsylvania and Michigan and Florida. Wherever you are, know that we are with you and that more importantly, God is with you. And so we welcome you into the sanctuary of, of God's welcome for each one of you. If this is your first Sunday here, Please make sure and let me know after the service. I would love to offer a special welcome to you, uh, and we're glad that you are here. And I know we're glad that you're here on a happy weekend in Happy Valley when we won yesterday, so a very happy day for all Penn State folks as well. Uh, a couple announcements before we begin worship this morning. We continue our Creation Care series, and on the last Sunday of this month, which is September 25th, we will have a blessing of the animal service. We're going to attempt and pray that there's no rain. We're going to set up outside on the lawn and have an outdoor service, dress appropriately. Uh, Charlie will be with us. Charlie's a wonderful pastor's kid, our little fluffy dog, as you know. Um, it, br please bring your animals. Uh, please bring them on leashes and, and, and sweet little carriers. If your animal has a hard time uh, being a good neighbor to other uh, animals, uh, please bring a picture of that animal, and I'll be <laughs> happy to bless that animal that way. But as I mentioned last week in New York City, where I served on the Upper West Side, a sweet, sweet eight-year-old <laughs> had lovely uh, big black Madagascar cockroaches as her uh, pet, and I held them in my hand, and I held a snake around my neck too. So look, if it doesn't bite, I will, I, we will bless it, and if it bites, I will bless through the screen. Um, so please do come. It will be a beautiful, beautiful service. Um, on October 9th, this is looking ahead, we will have our annual Cider Press Day at Larry and Lewis's house everybody's welcome. You'll hear more details from Lois on that, uh, but I just want you to have that on your radar, radar October 9th. Everybody leaves with cider. It's a pretty amazing event as well. Um, welcome back to the choir. Can we welcome them back? So exciting. I have missed them. We've missed you, Marinda. We've missed you, choir. We are so glad that you are here. Um, if you're interested in singing and being part of the choir, please see Marinda afterwards. Um, we're always welcoming anybody who would like to come and sing. Um, I'm mindful that today we worship on 9-11, on uh, and, and so I know that for us here in Pennsylvania, uh, we are know that down by Bedford, one of the planes was down there. Uh, after living in New York City, this has become a, an important day for me as well. So let's take a moment of silence as we remember those who are grieving still, um, and we pray for peace in our world. Amen. I welcome Lois to come forward with a wonderful announcement for our congregation, too. Uh, just a, a little bit of history quickly. Uh, back in the 90s, early 90s, 93 and 94, uh, our church was blessed to have an assistant pastor for a whole year. Uh, and that assistant pastor was a German um, pastoral uh, preparing for ordination. Uh, it was an internship for him, Andreas Nels. And uh, his wife uh, filled the same role at the church in Bowlesburg, at St. John's uh, UCC in Bowlesburg, uh, for a year. And they were just a delightful couple, and we got become very good friends. And that uh, year that they were here um, inaugurated a series of events after they went home and were ordained and were serving in a church. Then they initiated a uh, sort of uh, exchange uh, visit exchange between their churches there and our churches here and people were able to go and visit and stay in people's homes and it was just a wonderful time. Um, 
those people, uh, Andreas and Anna, are going to be here, are planning to be here anyway, next Sunday. Uh, they're coming for a vacation that's been waiting to happen since the fall of 2020. Um, they were coming in 2020, and then they couldn't, and then they were coming in 2021, and then they couldn't, and we're praying that this year it's going to work. Um, they should be, um, if not flying now, flying soon. coming here to Center County. Uh, so I just wanted to make anyone who's interested in Germany and um, you know, pastoring other places, and all kinds of things, but especially those of you who remember the Nelsas who were here at that time, uh, it will be a nice time to catch up with them next Sunday. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alyssa. Appreciate it. Uh, are there any other announcements that I'm missing that you would like to share? Excellent. Well, let's prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls for worship this morning. I invite you to take a deep breath and maybe close your eyes and personally and quietly say, I invite you here, God. I invite you here into my life. I invite you to speak to me, Christ. I invite your spirit to be here. If you're at home, I welcome you to light the candles as we have here to symbolize that Christ is the light of the world, Christ is the head of the church, and that light is what is guiding us as a church and as individuals. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we can do that by calling each other into worship with the call to worship found in our bulletin that Alex will lead us in. Alex. Worship. As the seasons change from summer to fall, just as sunflowers and apples grace our land with new fruit, just as our gardens may begin to slow down their growth, we rest assured that though the earth changes, So, we pause in our busy lives to come in joyful celebration. We restore our hope in this morning. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we pause each week in compassion and soul from the previous week. This moment is not of divine condemnation, but rather a chance for us to be honest and reflect so that we may garner some wisdom for the week ahead. We pause in quiet care, asking your Holy Spirit to survey our hearts so that we may take responsibility for the words and actions that have caused harm and broken our relationships. God, you are our higher power, so we rely on you to help us change. Speak to us now in this moment of private silence. Compassionate Christ, forgive us, renew us. Help us to be gentle with ourselves and with others as we learn to do better. In the mercy of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far have our sins been removed from us. In Christ we are forgiven, we are renewed, and mercy is ours. Live as people forgiven and free and at peace. Peace in your own heart, peace with each other, and peace with our God. As a sign of the peace of Christ, I invite you to stand as you are able and share in the peace of Christ with neighbors around you. And if you don't know somebody's name, feel free to ask them as well. The peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, friends. Peace, peace, peace. Peace to you at home. Peace, peace of Christ. 
Let us remain standing as you are able in body or spirit and sing our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, right in front of you and the words on screen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, 9 through 12, and 28. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Morning. We are so excited to have returned. This is very short. Oh well. We are so excited to be back. We um, welcome the choir back this week. This uh, the anthem from this morning 
is called God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens. I know it's not in your bulletin. I'd like to take a moment and read the text because there's such beautiful imagery. The text is written by Catherine Cameron. God who stretched the spangled heavens, infinite in time and place, flung the sun's through the silent fields of space. We, your children, in your likeness, share met we, we yet may do. We have ventured worlds undreamed of since the childhood of our race known the ecstasy of winging them, yielding unimagined power, facing us with life's destruction or our most triumphant hour. As each far horizon beckons, may it challenge us anew, children of creative purpose, serving others, honoring you. May our dreams prove rich with promise, each endeavor well begun. Great creator, give us guidance till our goals and yours are one.
so much choir isn't it good to welcome them back oh it's so good and don't they look sharp in the choir robes too I uh that's you look good you look good I don't know how you feel about them but I, I you look good <laughs> I want you to know that <laughs> you look very good uh, kids young and old I see some of you are ready if you have your backpacks or purses but that's for the big ones uh, come on forward you're welcome to come Young and old. Oh, Henry's here. Oh, I love that backpack. Come on over. And if you are at home, come on. Oh, Marvel. I love that. Go ahead and sit right there, honey. You you got a big backpack. Hi, Henry. Oh, boom. Hello. Oh, and stars. I love that. If there are any others that want to come forward, you're welcome to. I know we have a lot of kids at home today. Uh, Bring your backpacks to the screen, and you're welcome to go ahead and show the online congregation what you have. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hi, high fives. High five. Oh, I love it. High five. Awesome. So um, school's been going on for a little bit, yeah? What, what grade are you in? Are you in preschool? Yeah, yeah. What grade are you in? I am in the lizards. In In what? In the lizards. Okay, okay. And what grade are you in? Third grade. Third grade. Okay, so do you have a backpack at home too? Yeah, what color is your backpack? Do you have a... What is it? Blue. Blue. I love it. Okay, let, let's see your backpacks. You want to put them, pull them out here for all of us? Oh, I love this. Are you a big Marvel person? Yep. Yeah? Do you like, um, well, you know, you might need to talk to Jesse about that stuff. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm looking at this. Oh, yeah, I've seen this on our TV before. <laughs> um, why don't we open up our backpacks and let's see. Um, why don't you pull out one of your favorite things in your backpack? It could be a, a pencil or paper or computer. I remember I showed my age on this last time. What do you got in there? Yeah, take your time opening that. I love that. These are, are these brand new? Yeah. Oh my word, I love this one. Oh, what, what is, what is their name? Dino. Oh, I love it. And what color? Green. Green. This is a great, I should, I want to borrow this. This is, you are wonderful. I love that. Thank you for sharing. What, oh, what is this? Go ahead and tell us. Uh, this is a whale. A whale. And what's the whale's name? William the Whale. William the Whale. Prince William the Whale or just William the Whale? Prince William the 55th. <laughs> Prince William the 55th. We are in the future. I love that. This is, this is, you have high hopes for that monastery. That's, that's lovely. This is beautiful. Do you have a favorite stuffed animal? Yeah. What's one of your favorite stuffed animals? Lamb. A lamb? Oh, I love that. Well, um, I want to show you what's in what's in my backpack. Um, I have a phone in mine. Do you have tablets or computers you work with? At, uh, do you have paper? Paper? Yeah. Okay. Um, I also have. Oh, guess what else I have? What are these? Band-aids. Band-aids. Who's on these band-aids? Uh. Um. <laughs> Princesses? Yeah, princesses. I got my booster on Friday, and I needed special band-aids. When you get shots, do you need special band-aids? Yeah. I yeah. Think I just need a little ocean queen band-aid. <laughs> hey, I have that little ocean queen on me right now. Yeah, she's right there. I get, I get scared of the shots sometimes, so I need like special band-aids, like like you guys do actually. Um, and then let's see. Oh, you know what else I have in here? Um, what is this? <laughs> do you know what that is? Uh, sauce. Sauce? Do you, do you know what we do with this? No. It's cu little communion cups. Little communion cups. I carry these in my backpack. You can see the bread here and the juice because I travel to people's homes and I give them communion at home like, like we're here. So you can find communion and lipstick in my bag. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. I love it. Well, how has school been going, you guys? What have, what have you been learning? Or have you made new friends? Yeah? What are some of your friends' names? Uh, you don't know? Okay. Yeah, do you I have think. one? Yep. What's his name? I forgot. You forgot. Okay. Do you like... Oh, here, I'll get it. I'll get Marvel here. Do you, do you go to recess? Yeah. What's your favorite thing at recess? 
Do, do you do marigold rounds? Do you have those? Uh, no, but it's hard to decide what my favorite thing is. It's hard to decide what our favorite thing at recesses, recess is. That, that's true. That's awesome. Um, well, I, I love school. And when I was your age, there were so many things I was learning. I was learning about how to be kind to people, right? There are sometimes we encounter kids our age that are not always kind, and we have to figure out how are we going to be kind to people that are not always nice to us. That's sometimes a challenge. Big, big kids also have to deal with that. Sometimes we learn about new things like dinosaurs and, and the galaxy. Do you like the galaxy and stars? Yeah. Oh, what do you have in there that you want to show? Oh, a big book. Oh, oh, and dinosaurs. I love this. This is awesome. You like dinosaurs? Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us. These bags help carry so many new things that we're learning. And while we are, you have things at home that you want to share at, at home, please feel free to do that. But we call this the blessing of the backpack, but it's actually, you, what, you know who we're blessing today? Actually, you guys. We're actually blessing the kids because the backpacks are really cool, but we actually want to give a blessing to the kids and, and for them to be safe and happy and joyful and learn so much. And we want you to know, and the kids at home, that no matter what questions you have or what feelings you have, yeah, that's right. That's okay. You can wave. This is your, this is your church family. We are here for you. So I'm going to have the big kids the adults say, we are here for you, okay? I want you to see that. On the count of three, we are here for you. One, two, three. We are here for you. And that's for you at home as well. We are here for you. That's so nice. Maybe we should say thank you back to them. Can we say thank you on the count of three real loud? One, three. One, two, one. Thank you. That's so nice. That's so nice. So let's pray for you and for you at home, and, this, and for all of the students here, let's pray for the year ahead. Let's pray. Can we hold hands? Yeah? Okay, let's hold hands. You can hold there. Oh, that's perfect. Let's hold hands. Dear God, thank you so much for all of the kids in our church, for those at home, for their teachers, for homeschooling, for private schools and charter schools and public schools and all the ways that our kids are learning this year. Keep them safe, help them to grow, may they have good friends, and may they always have a buddy to sit with at the cafeteria. Bless the parents, bless all of the caretakers, and we thank you so much for who they are. In Jesus' name, we all say together, amen. We love you, and we hope that the new school year goes well. Thank you for showing me Marvel. A physical therapy band in mine, but I didn't think it was in theirs as well <laughs> for my knee. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts lead us to you, the risen Christ. Make room in our lives for you. Help us to encounter you in this good word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin the Creation Care series last 
Sunday, and I've been busy talking with many of you. We've got lots of gardeners, lots of farmers, and I've and so enjoyed getting to hear your theology, your ecology, and how you make sense of the scripture and the earth. And you're going to hear more next week uh, in part three of our series. We're going to look at Hildegard von Bingen, uh, and I know some of you, she's very important to you. Marinda's got a beautiful piece of music that she wrote, Hildegard, back in the 1100s in Germany. And Dr. Ferragudo just taught on Hildegard von Bingen at the university. So you're going to hear more next week about her. What I'm realizing before I offer this sermon is there's so much material here that I'm really interested in, that I think scripture's really interested in. The land is mentioned so many times in scripture. And so we're developing our theology and our response and our encounter with God together. So this is from Genesis 1, and it's titled Hummus, Humans, and Humility. In 2014, the Garden Church in California was founded. Had any of you heard of the Garden Church? I didn't think so, so I'm glad to introduce them to you. It was founded as a longing and a wondering, a vision and a hope, that the church could be something that spoke to the interconnection of food and earth, community and God. Finding an empty parking lot and working together to change the concrete into the soil, an urban garden was formed in an outdoor sanctuary. You thought kayak church was wild. This is, guess what's coming next? No, I'm just kidding, don't worry. Liturgy and acts of justice, sacred hymns sung along the cracks of the sidewalks and where the hurts of the people in the city could f come and find healing. The first church service, they placed a beautiful, large cedar trump a stump right in the middle of their parking lot and this stump used uh, that they dedicated as the Lord's table. The table that held the sacrament was the earth herself. People came to the garden to worship, to volunteer, to take home fresh veggies, often what we have this time of year as the overflow of abundance that people bring. People came to the garden to worship, to pray, to feed, and to be fed. Their church service continues to meet weekly, and they work the garden together as part of their worship. Every age has responsibility as the little kids get excited about picking the peas, and the unhoused man eats the kumquat, and professors are in conversations with meth addicts. The 80-year-old who grew up in the church prunes the tomatoes with the atheist teenager. The land, the garden, holds the people so that they may encounter the living God together. God created this land, and God called it good. Their hymns of praise blend in with the noise of the city. The wind and the helicopters above can be heard between their praises. And around the tree of life, that cedar stump, with the soil from the ground, all are welcome to be fed and to feed. My friend, Pastor Anna, started this church with a vision, as she said, from scripture, and God saw the land and called it good. Scripture begins with the land in Genesis 1, and scripture ends with the land in Revelation 22. We'll hear more from Revelation next week, but for today, I wonder a few things. Like many of you, I am concerned with the growing aggressive divisions in our country. And I've been wondering, is it possible that the land and God's good creation might bind us together in the common good for all? Is it possible that, the, like the Garden Church, we too can take care of the land and find our common need for forgiveness and grace and mercy where all are welcome? Now let's dive into this thought even more. For the more theologically geeky among us, you're going to like this part. For those that don't like to dive deep, hang with me. We'll come back up to the stories in a minute, and there's going to be some call and response, so get a little comfortable here. So the word in Hebrew 
used in Genesis 1-1 is the Hebrew word Eretz. Repeat after me, Eretz. Eretz, yes. Which is similar to the Greek word that we see in the New Testament used for the land called Geis. Repeat after me, Geis. Now, what's interesting about Eretz and Geis, Geis is the possessive form of the word that means place or land, meaning that one belongs to the land, one belongs to an area. Uh, There is a location the people come from. In the beginning, God made the soil, Eretz, Geis, and from it we belong. This land is what we share in common. It is what coal miners call home. It is what dairy farmers milk their cows on. It is what we find joy when we gather outdoors on our lawn and run around and worship. The land connects us all. It is what we share in common in a lonely and hurting world. The green graces of God sustain us and nourish us and restore us through the resurrected sun. The hummus of the land and human beings are intimately connected. In fact, the root of these words, hummus, humans, and humility, are all connected. It comes from the same Latin root word. Eugene Peterson, the pastoral theologian who wrote the message translation of Scripture, sometimes we we hear from that here, he writes this. The Latin words for hummus and earth and homo, human being, have a common derivation from which we get the word humble. Humble. This is the Genesis origin of who we are. Dust. Dust the Lord God used to make us as human beings. If we cultivate a lively sense of the origin and nurture a sense of community within, who knows? we might also acquire humility. Every Ash Wednesday, as the sign of the cross is made on your foreheads as you come forward or I stand out on the street and remind people from dust we come to dust we will return, another way to think about this, actually, from Scripture is from the soil we come to the soil we return. We are Easter people. We are to live as The belief that life is stronger than death, that resurrection has conquered the violence and the deaths of this world. But what would it do to how we interact with one another if Ash Wednesday was also in our heart every day? From the soil we come to the soil we return. Easter people with Easter hope, but the humility of the soil comes for all of us. Would our common connection of the good earth help us to see the goodness in each other that God saw in Genesis? Democrat and Republican, evangelical and progressive, religious and non-religious, Russian, Ukrainian, refugee and immigrant, city and rural, gay and straight, and so on and so on. I'm starting to wonder, is it possible that the soil is where we begin? because the soil is where we end. And this should humble us and direct our efforts as we care for one another. Our livelihood and our sustainability is deeply connected to the ties of the land. How many of you are familiar with Wendell Berry? Kentucky, yes, of course, Cecil. Kentucky farmer, he writes a lot about faith and the land and poetry. He is a wonderful writer. I commend him to you. He says this, It is impossible to care for each other more or differently than we care for the earth. Listen to that again. That's a pretty big statement. It is impossible to care for each other more or differently than we care for the earth. Aretz, Geis, Hummus, this is what we have in common. This is what we are made of and what we live from. Therefore, we cannot damage the earth without damaging those around us. This week, I want you to live and use the land as a tool as you meditate on Christ's call for all of us 
to love and forgive and to be merciful to one another. Maybe you have a neighbor in your neighborhood that's really difficult to love. Maybe the cat comes over and you're sick of the cat pooping in your neighborhood. Or maybe the dog won't stop barking. Or maybe there's just some unkind neighbors. I want you to go on a walk this week, walk by their house, and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to make a show of it, but in your own heart, pray for them. Just pray for them. Look at the land and pray for them. Or maybe there's some play, somebody far away uh, that is difficult for you to love, maybe a family member, maybe a friend. There's someone in my life that's far away, and I know that they like gardening. So I commit to you, and I invite you to do this with me this week. When I'm out in my garden, I'm going to think of this person, and I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray for their livelihood, their forgiveness, their mercy. I can't change their actions. We can't change the people we don't like, but we can change our heart and how we respond to them. And that's how peace begins in this world. So who, whoever is difficult in your life, think about the land where they belong. Maybe there's a pool. I guess that's a manufactured land, but maybe there's a, a, a lake or something. And as a, take a moment this week to pray for them so that your heart is clean and your life has vitality. Hummus, humans, and humility. God created us all, and God calls us all good. May the land be the thing that binds us together, and may we work to care for it. And out of our love for one another, may the risen Christ be apparent in our actions and how we care and love each other. Let us pray. It is from you we are born, and it is to you we die. We belong to each other, and we belong to this earth. Humble us, embolden us, and grant us the wisdom to know how to follow you, the resurrected Christ, every day. For your mercy we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able in body or spirit as we sing our sermon hymn, We Cannot Own the Sunlit Sky, hymn number 563.
We turn to each other for prayer. Uh, we welcome you to share your prayers if you feel so moved. You're welcome to raise your hand. I'll come by and you can share your prayers in the microphone. If you have a praise, you're also welcome to share. And at home, please feel free to share your prayers in the chat box and our technicians will go ahead and read that out loud and we'll incorporate, incorporate them in our prayers together. What are we praying for this morning, church? Prayers for the UK and everybody affected by the Queen's passing. Indeed, we pray. We pray for, I was thinking about this this week, in the Anglican tradition, the uh, King or Queen is the head of the Church of England, so we pray for um, our siblings in the Anglican Church. Good morning. Um, Thanksgiving for finding an assisted living community that my parents can be accepted to. One, one more percent, we're 99% per, 9 sure. Um, please, prayers for my mom and dad's health and especially my mom's brother, my uncle, who's um, severely and critically ill. And, but praise that we can just get all through all this. Thank you. Our prayers are, are with you, Diane and Bill, as, as you take on the role of parenting uh, as well. Um, blessings. And for Henry as well. Parenting young and old <laughs> and helping. All their prayers are thanksgivings. Good morning. I have a, a, an update to share from June Irvin. She has tested negative for COVID. She's still tired, but very relieved, and she wanted to send her special thank yous for prayers and cards, all the well wishes, food offerings, phone calls, every, all the ways that you've been um, caring for her. She does have her immediate family, and um, they are continuing to help her. She's so very blessed for her church family as well. Jesse, thank you. Other prayers or thanksgivings you would like to share? I know there's always so many in our heart we might not want to. Yes, April, come on up to the lectern, April. Yeah, yeah go ahead, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask for prayers um, for Jason's very best friend from birth um, and his sister, Jonathan and Kristen, um, they just had to make a very difficult decision um, to take their father, who is like Jason's second father, um, off of care. Um, and so they're preparing for his end of life. And um, so it's a very difficult time. Um, it's been a very difficult time in our lives, um, so we're just asking for prayers for um, peace and um, as we are going to go help be their support, um, we're going to need help for them and just help them to be uplifted and um, as they prepare to prepare, you know, for his end of life. So. This is our prayer. God, hear our prayers, and our prayers are with you, Jason, um, as well in, in April. Any other prayers or thanksgivings you would like to share? Matthew, for those who are at home. Uh, from Tammy Falls, please pray for me and my family as I prepare to move and deal with some life changes, and also prayers for world peace. moment there are hundreds and hundreds of prayers that are in our heart in our mind just as we sit here that we might not feel comfortable to name them out loud hurts in our heart joys in our life whatever you are going through you can trust that you've been prayed for today because you've been here so know that and trust that the spirit is working in your life and we pray for you so all of the unspoken prayers and those that we have spoken, we take them to our good God now in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, we come to you as a people in need of your grace. We come to you for strength for our journey to know how to go about justice and mercy and to walk in humility. 
for the hurt that is in our lives. We ask for your care to come and heal us and bring strength to know which way to go. For the joy and the strength, give us direction for the journey ahead. For our church family here, those we know and those we have yet to know, we pray for your blessing and your guidance and for each person here worshiping. May your grace and your love speak to them this morning. For our families and our friends and our loved ones, we pray gratitude. For the people that's difficult to love, for the people where our hearts get hardened, where we feel the need for revenge or for hatred or for aggression. We pray that you in the spirit of Psalm 51 would create a new heart within us so that mercy would be the guide in which we live. We pray for equity and justice in our world. We pray for a world that has enough enough food, enough resources, enough avenues to get what we need in order to not only survive but thrive. We pray for all of those at home worshiping wherever home is. We pray for your love and your grace and guidance. We pray for all of our kids in our congregation, those here today and those traveling and those at home. We pray for teachers we pray for peace for our teachers who seem to be caught in divides in our country. We pray for their strength, for safe classrooms, for hope, for know that they are making a difference. We pray for all of our college students, both here and those worshiping at home and the whole university. We pray for good classrooms and friends and meaningful conversations and the belief to know that they are not alone, but they always have a friend here at this church. And we pray for the good earth, the land that we all call home, the one that binds us to each other. Help us to care for it well. Help us to care for our neighbors well. Tending the flowers and the vegetables and the farms and the mines, guide us according to your mercy. Hear now our personal prayers in this moment of silence. In the unity of our faith, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us of our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. There are offering plates by the back doors on your way out those doors, on your way out here. You're also able to use the fancy QR code to take you to our giving page right now, as well as good old fashioned snail mail at the address here uh, on your screen and in your bulletin. We thank you for your offering, talent and your treasures. We together are the church here at Faith UCC in the expression of God's gospel. Our special offering for the month of September is to Park Forest Preschool, which is a recipient of our Penguin Packs program, which helps support hungry kids in this preschool. Uh, and you'll hear more about Penguin Packs at World Communion Sunday, which is the first, October, first Sunday in October. Please stand in body or spirit as you are able as we sing our praises in the doxology.
let us remain standing and sing our closing hymn. I think this is new, it might be new to many of you. It's in this section in our hymnal that we'll be singing from this month and stewardship and planets flung in orbit 567. As we go forth from here and we pray for the land that our neighbors live on and pray for people that are difficult to love and for so many of you that work and till the land in many different ways, whether it be a garden or, or wine or, or the farm, or wherever you are, receive this blessing as you go. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God look to you and bring you peace. Go forward this week knowing how much Christ loves you. Share that love with the world around you. Go in peace, my friends. And thanks to the choir for being back. I sure get lonely up here without you. Go in peace, dear ones.